market is far beyond our expectation. It's the safest way of owning a house. My amount is full of appreciation to Federal Mortgage Bank. Hello and welcome to this edition of the program. My name is Zulehat Belagobiri, your host. Glad to have you join us on this program. Housing is a fundamental human need. In fact, People say, aside food, housing comes next in the hierarchy of human needs. And for the average Nigerian, owning a home is of utmost priority. How best can this be done in the midst of so many needs? On this episode, we will deviate from the usual line of our program and bring you a special package about the NHF scheme. But before then, we will take updates from the diary of the FMBN. Stay tuned. The 2021 edition of the AccuBuild Exposition was held recently at the International Conference Center Abuja with the theme focusing on the built environment and its stakeholders. In a goodwill message, the Managing Director, Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, architect Ahmed Nguwa, who was represented by the group head, Corporate Communications, Lowell Isa Kofasori, called on the Institute to constantly engage stakeholders on issues affecting the environment. The theme of 2021 edition focusing on the built environment and its stakeholders is quite apt as we need to constant, constantly engage, re-examine and reappraise our roles and progress on issues affecting our environment. He also called on government at all levels to adopt measures to promote citizen inclusiveness. We should be concerned about creating green public spaces and embracing the solar energy system to reduce pollution and help the environment. Nigerians from all walks of life besieged Ibado, the Oyo state capital, to witness the burial of the former board chairman of the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, late Dr. Adewale Adeyo, who died on the 15th of October 2021. Prominent among them were the former governor of Ogun state, Senator Ibikunle Amosun, Chairman Ngote Groups, Aliko Dangote, the Timi of Ede, where the late chairman hailed from, the managing director, Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, architect Ahmed Ngiwa, business associates and colleagues. The burial was preceded by funeral prayers graced by family members, friends, and sympathizers. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thereafter, his remains were laid to rest at the Eternal Home Cemetery, Ibadan, or your state, amidst prayers for the repose of his soul. Like I mentioned earlier, we will veer off the usual and bring you a special package titled Reflections on NHF, what it is and how it affects the housing industry in Nigeria. Do stay tuned. To be without shelter is a terrible experience. Though human needs are numerous, they can be narrowed down to food, shelter, and clothing. To a large extent, all life depend on the provision of these three basic needs to survive. Outside these three, every other need is secondary. According to Maslow, Basic needs are foundational needs which under normal circumstances are engaged first before all other aspirations. Shelter has been universally accepted as the second most important human need after food. 
Aside from the well-being of an individual, shelter is put together to also provide security and protection against the harsh elements and challenges of life. No matter how remote, in every society, an individual is expected to have an abode from which to take off and return at the end of each day. Since shelter is a basic need, all over the world, homelessness depicts life in abject poverty and no nation would like to have her citizens shelterless. When there are houses for civil servants, when they know that at the end of retirement period, they will have a roof over their head, it will make them more productive and also it will make them to be uh, more honest uh, because they know at the end of the day they will have a roof uh, over their head. In all its ramifications, shelter goes beyond a roof over an individual's head. It includes the utilities and amenities that enable good living. To achieve a habitable home, there are certain building costs, elements, that cannot be avoided. They include land, infrastructure, and material utilization. And all these cost money, which the poor cannot readily afford. It took me about five years before I started uh, building, after I got in the land. So I started making a contribution, we buying blocks, small, small. When I get about 200 or 300 blocks, then I started with the foundation. It took me after then, it took me two, three years, gathering another block again, before jacking up the, the house started building the house, we went to the Linta level. It took me time again, about two years, before we start the lintel and the, the roofing level. So it was not an easy thing. Before you even uh, zinc the house, you enter the house, you buy the doors and whatsoever. It was not a small thing. So I really suffered very well before I got into that house. I even entered the house, there was no even uh, plastering. I just entered like that. I fixed the doors, fixing the doors, the back door and the main door. We put windows and we just enter from there. They start plastering one room from one room to another. The largest expense incurred in most families by far has remained housing. Current expenses on housing include loans, mortgage or rent payments, taxes, repairs, insurance, utilities, etc. The burden of these bills most times is heavy and unbearable to the low and medium income earners within every society. This situation has left many households without habitable homes, especially in most developing countries. I would love to own a house, only that it seems impossible, you know. I hardly, I can, I could barely pay my rent, so I don't know. No, it will be, it's a, it's a dream, it's a very nice idea. You always think about it, like, but is it even possible with the situation in Nigeria now, where most of your uh, earnings or monthly income goes into food, clothing, light, you know from the look of things and the way things are going up. I've been to the market recently. Buying things, you cannot afford, like normally on Sunday you cook rice and stew, but now you can't even do that. You manage jollof rice, that is for those that have jollof rice. So it's actually difficult, very, very difficult. In Nigeria, the seventh most populous country in the world, home to more than 200 million people, the cost required to build a habitable, low-cost house has been on the increase. On the basis of cost per square meter, it will fall within the range of 12,000 to 18,000 naira per square meter, and this varies widely between rural and the urban areas. It is important to note here that even the speculated minimum of 12,000 naira by far exceeds the affordability of millions in Nigeria. 
with the high costs of building materials, difficulties in acquiring land, and logistics for buildings, some Nigerian workers even retire from service without a habitable house of their own, an embarrassing situation which has continued to haunt many serving and retired public and private workers in Nigeria. When somebody is required to pay like say 10 million and his miss cannot provide it, you are encouraging him to cut corners. We are encouraging him to go into corruption. So some of our policies and behaviors encourage people to, to steal. Uh, if a house is 20 million and you want a civil servant of level seven to buy, then there is a problem there. You go all over the place. The same system will bleed so that he can get it. And so there are many people. So the system will bleed and you find the system crippled. It will not work. Up until the recent past, Nigeria's demography was largely rural with few concentrated cities. This has remained the situation till the 1970s when the oil boom era changed our ways of life. The nation began to witness a rapid increase in her population growth and a high rate of rural-urban drift as people, largely farmers from the rural areas, trooped into the cities in search of white-collar jobs. As the population continued to increase and cities swarmed with white-collar job seekers, the few available cities became congested. With increasing demands for habitable shelters that are in short supply, Costs to build or rent a house began to soar in most Nigerian cities. With rising costs, many more Nigerians began to find themselves in positions where they could no longer afford habitable shelters. This brought about desperate times for many dislocated citizens, and within a short period of time, unplanned residential areas began to spring up all around the cities in the country with their negative consequences. In these unhealthy environments, popularly referred to as slums, people from all walks of life began to live in squalor and deplorable conditions. From a fairly bad situation, this situation has continued to grow to an unbearable, alarming situation that challenges everything that is dear to us as a people. The perennial issue of housing costs has brought about serious shortfalls in housing. This situation, among others, has brought about acute inequality and several negative challenges within most societies. Strange lifestyles, only heard of in other climes and places, have now become the order of the day in Nigeria. The slums have continued to also pose serious threats to lives and security in the cities. Over time, these places have created notorious dens for drugs, crimes, and many terrible ways of life. Even the police fear to tread in some of these areas. To tackle the nation's looming housing challenge and make habitable shelter available and affordable for all Nigerians. In the year 1973, following the introduction of the indigenization policy, the government of Nigeria acquired the Nigerian Building Society, NBS, and renamed it as the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, with the primary goal of providing friendly mortgages for every Nigerian to own a habitable house. In the 1970s, the issue of mortgage was new to most Nigerians whose ubiquitous means of building or buying a house was through private savings and loans. Mortgage is through the Fair Mortgage Bank. For me, I see it as a social housing scheme that government has put in place to help eligible Nigerians own their homes. Unfortunately, the level of awareness is not as it should be. 
level of awareness is still a bit uh, low. Why am I saying this? Because uh, from the sector that I came in from, I used to be a commercial banker and uh, within the period I worked in commercial banking, I can tell you that most, maybe about 80% of my colleagues do not know what mortgage is about. If you touch anybody, he tells you, don't worry, when I'm ready to buy a house, I just can buy. It's one, maybe because commercial bankers feel they're well paid, so they do not really see the need to apply for mortgages. Unfortunately, um, that's not the way to go. Mortgage loans are loans made to help individuals secure a house up front and gradually pay up over a period of time. A deed is made in which the borrower, or the mortgagor, agrees to pay back loan and interest within an agreed period of time. Once the amount due the lender, or mortgagee, is paid up, the property on mortgage is handed over to the mortgagor. In the case where the borrower fails to repay the loan as agreed upon, the property in question is sold off to recover the loan outstanding. Over time, the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria existed as both secondary and primary mortgage, whereby people rush to the bank, collect loan, build their own houses, and then go buy their own houses through the mortgage of the Federal, Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria. But over time, people refused to pay or could not pay. They are not paying because they realize it's a government institution. So with that, I think that time, the federal government at that time realized that it's better they create a buffer. Primary mortgage institutions, who are mostly private sector, who can now come to Federal Mortgage Bank and collect the wholesale mortgage and then go and retail it to the individual mortgages, mortgages in, the, in the society. The Mortgage Institution Decree number 53 of 1989 created a two-tier mortgage loan structure for Nigerians with the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria, FMBN, as the apex institution in the housing sector. The second tier is made up of a decentralized network of primary mortgage institutions, building societies, housing cooperatives, housing associations, etc. Those uh, who were opportune to get access to the loans also confirmed it has met their housing needs, they now have roofs over their heads, and of course uh, it has improved the standing for the financial status of their homes. Now being homeowners, now being landlords of their own homes, having their own properties, and of course that's opened other um, benefits to them as well, uh, social and economic benefits. Mortgage uh, generally is talking about access to home ownership through loan. We, as a primary mortgage bank, has keyed into that arrangement and so far from 2017 that I resume duty, we'll be rolling out mortgages to Nigerians, especially those at the uh, public service. The enabling acts that regulate the bank empower the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria to oversee both primary and secondary mortgages in the country, as well as promote the growth of primary mortgage institutions in Nigeria. Under this arrangement, FMBN offers mortgage to the primary mortgage institutions, which in turn shall carry out retail lending to their individual customers who need loans to own a house. Individual mortgage applications are packaged and managed by these primary mortgage institutions into bundles which are refinanced by the FMBN. So which means that the primary mortgage banks wait on FMBN to provide the funding and then they take a spread in terms of the profit that they make and then they own lend. But if we were a mature economy, the primary mortgage banks will raise money on their own, create the mortgages on their own and then approach FMBN for the financing of those mortgages. To ameliorate the situation, most governments have come up with several means of interventions to help citizens own houses of their own. 
the Federal Mortgage Bank of Nigeria was saddled with the responsibility of providing low interest loans to credible developers across the country engaged in affordable housing and real estate developments. Given its unique position in the nation's building industry, the bank was also required to provide the capital market the necessary incentives required to encourage investments in property development. Sadly, for the bank, her mandate was way beyond her ability to deliver, given her low capital base and grossly inadequate resources from the beginning. If we were a society that had a concentrated living uh, in cities, then the problem of housing would have been very obvious very, very early in life of, the, of this uh, country or this republic than it was because many people uh, lived in villages and nobody really bothered uh, what the quality of housing they had in those villages because it was traditional form of housing. And until they began to come to the cities and crowd the cities uh, over the long period of time that it began to become very clear to government that, oh, so we have a huge problem here of getting our people housed properly. To move forward, the need to raise substantial housing funds to finance mortgages and housing loans in the country had to be addressed. In the year 1992, the National Housing Fund, NHF Act No. 3, was introduced by the then government of Ibrahim Babangida to raise a huge pool of funds required to combat the challenges inhibiting progress within the housing sector in Nigeria. This gave birth to the National Housing Fund Scheme in Nigeria. The NHF was basically an agency or a fund created uh, for affordable housing for the Nigerian public. And it had six principal um, uh, motives in dealing with this issue of affordable housing. And the very first one was the general mobilization of fund in the economy for affordable housing. And the second was to provide loans to the Nigerian public specifically meant for uh, development, development of housing uh, for the poor people or the not so rich people in the country. The National Housing Fund, NHF, was designed as a social saving scheme for all Nigerian workers, both in the public and private sector. Given the low income levels in Nigeria, to achieve the sustainable large pool of funds that is adequate enough for the scheme, the Act also mandated certain categories of investments from banks, insurance companies, and periodic massive capital support by the federal government of Nigeria. The Act earmarked statutory capital base of 5 billion naira and principal shareholders made up of the Federal Government of Nigeria, FGN, 50%, the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, 30%, and the National Social Insurance Trust Fund, NSITF, 20%, respectively. The Act also stipulated a 2.5% basic wage mandatory contribution from all Nigerian workers. When the bank was created in 1993 as FMBN through an act of parliament, the shareholders were basically the federal go go uh, government of Nigeria, 50%, the central bank of Nigeria that owns 30%, and the Nigerian Social Insurance Trust Fund, 20%. But only the federal government made good its capital contribution of 2.5 billion naira because the capital at inception was 5 billion. And it is only that 2.5 billion that has been the capital of the bank. CBN are supposed to collect uh, investments from commercial banks, 10% of their loan portfolio. Whatever they budgeted to give as loan for every year, they should cut 10% of it and send to Federal Mortgage Bank Nigeria as an investment 
for FMBN to give concessionary uh, affordable loans for low income earners to acquire their house. That's what the initial act states. But since the inception of the act, CBN has not done that. Neither the commercial bank has done that, that investment. It's a huge sum of money because the bank needs this kind of money in order to create affordable mortgages for Nigerians at single digit of 6% over a long period of 30 years. If you go to these commercial banks to get a mortgage loan, they can't give you more than five years mortgage. And they can give you less than 26%. But this is a bank that was set up to give a mortgage at 6% over a period up to 30 years of your life. As a developing country with a huge population that is in need of social housing, Nigeria has a big housing deficit. Mortgage business in Nigeria, therefore, needs huge investments to finance the ever-flowing streams of mortgage demands.